I remember years ago hearing about an idea of a sports complex coming to Springfield, and it was kind of one of those elusive things, uh, reminiscent of you know a Springfield episode of uh, Simpsons episode of uh, of the the monorail, but. Uh, now we have a new iteration with a bunch of individual and companies and uh, you know, stakeholders coming together to make it happen. It is the Legacy Point Shields Sports Complex, and they put the shovel in the ground yesterday to talk more about this. Ryan McCready, he's with Springfield Sangamon Growth Alliance. Uh, and this was a big day yesterday, Ryan. A very big day, and it's you're right. It's been talked about for a long time. Um, I will say the conversations in earnest started, uh, you know, just over three years ago, um, and the conversations with the city council and all the other bodies that would have to come together to make this thing happen. Uh, it was a it's a long journey. <clears throat> I appreciate that the developers, uh, Steve Luker and Dirk McCormick, stuck with it. Uh, also very much involved was the was uh, Scott Dahl from the Convention Visitors Bureau and the Springfield Hotel Lodging Association, too. Those are some folks that were involved early on in doing the market assessments and the studies. Once we got past that point where we could say, look, everybody says this is a moneymaker, then it became more of an economic development project. So Scott, uh, as he keeps saying, passed the baton over to the Growth Alliance and others to bring it where we are today. So it's very exciting. And yesterday, the uh, um, I guess is it a, a, a groundbreaking ceremony? I mean, you had yeah. the shovels and everything. I heard about the shovels you had ready. The, the, it was uh, it was quite a celebration. I someone told me three hundred people there for the groundbreaking. Wow. And, and uh, it was just it was it was great to see the support from the community, all the folks that showed up out there. Yes, we had the gold shovels because somebody in town <laughs> said, I'll believe it when I see the gold shovels turning. So I put a note to myself, all right, I need gold shovels. So a yeah. um, couple, you know, five cans of gold spray paint, you can make anything gold. <laughs> um, and <laughs> we had a, we had a uh, good, good celebration yesterday. Good to hear. Uh, and, of course, uh, a lot of uh, uh, look ahead into the future of what mm-hmm. this is going to mean for the city. Uh, of course, we'll touch on that. But uh, for people who are looking for more information and even some renderings, uh, of course, during the news conference, there were uh, renderings that were offered up. Uh, and uh, we're looking at some of those, if you're watching on the live stream here, uh, of those renderings. Of course, the Shields Sports Park at Legacy Point. And uh, it just looks it looks gorgeous, uh, Ryan. So if you can kind of see this over my shoulder, yeah. explain what we're looking at here. Uh, I can't quite see it, but... Uh, so it's yeah. an overview of the, of the park. It sure. looks like so outdoor the, and yeah. indoor type of facilities. The, the park itself is... Uh, the actual facilities are over 70 acres in size. When we include roads and retention, it's like it's over 90. Uh, all turf fields. So eight multi-purpose turf fields. And yes, we know there's parks in the area that have turf baseball fields. But listen to what I'm saying. Multi-purpose. Softball, baseball, big kid baseball, little kid baseball, lacrosse, uh, flag football. They're multi-purpose turf fields. Another feature is this 190,000 square foot dome structure. So to give you an idea how big this is, if you look at the Shields building, the dome is taller than the building and twice as long. Oh, wow. That gives you some concept of how big it is. It'll have six full-size basketball courts in it and a turf field inside of it. Uh, Those can be 12 volleyball courts, 18 pickleball courts, um, whatever new sport becomes popular because there's always one on the horizon uh, that that we need to be thinking about. This will not be like anything you see in the Midwest, certainly not in Illinois. Having shields there as an anchor is very unique. The other unique factor of this is this is privately developed and privately financed, and that that's very unique too. Ryan McCready with us. He is the um, uh, executive director. What's your title? Pre- with the president. But president. Yeah, that's okay. Our, yeah, the, uh, that's Springfield Sangamon Growth Alliance uh, talking about the uh, the sports complex where shovels were in the ground yesterday. Uh, of course, this this had to wait for a few of the you know pieces of uh, public bodies approving things, uh, including extending that uh, uh, that uh, the, the the tax uh, mm-hmm. issue in that area. Sure. Uh, what are some of the other things that still need to happen? Are there a few things that still need to kind of drop yeah. into place? There's going to be a couple more items that come before the city council now that we know for sure about the bond issu- issuances and things like that. So there's going to be another tweak to the developer's agreement because you have to have that those kind of documents all lined up. Uh, you will see it, probably additional users of the facility come forward. Uh, one of the things that, that we spent a good bit of time doing was getting the support of all the public bodies 
So not only the city council, but the county board, the airport authority, District 186, Lincoln Land Community College, the SMEA board, the Springfield Park District. I'm going to miss somebody and get in trouble. But um, <laughs> well, if, if they're a local governmental body, those folks need to – they need to tell them thanks when you see them because – most of these sports complexes, Greg, are built by a public body. So a city or park district borrows all the money, builds it, and hopes it works. That puts the risk on all the taxpayers. Since they're usually built by public bodies, they don't usually have a property tax component to them. And so for to keep our complex competitive from a pricing standpoint, we had to be able to have those property taxes abated, and that's why that was needed. But the arrangement with District 186 is unique because they get a use of the facility, too. So our local students will be out there enjoying these state-of-the-art facilities. Well, I imagine, too, that's going to be great for uh, practice and just play right. as well. That's, um, that's right. And, and District 186 not having to build all their own facilities for this middle school uh, students that they need uh, is, a, is a big benefit, too. So, yeah, it's, it's very exciting the way this community project came together. And up to a dozen local banks coming together to finance this thing. It's just there are so many things that happen that that are really inspiring. So obviously uh, we're going to be waiting to see the final pieces get put into place. But mm-hmm. shovels in the ground yesterday for the Shields Sports Park at Legacy Point. If people want to see more about this, they can actually go and visit the website LegacyPointE.net. So Point's got that E on the end. What is that, Old English or something? Or, I guess. You know, it's like Crowny <laughs> Plaza and uh, you know Medicine Shoppy. <laughs> Or it's a, so just make sure you put that in there, uh, the E at the end of point, so LegacyPoints.net, and uh, you'll be able to see renderings of this and all the details about it. But uh, Ryan McCready with the Sangamon and Springfield Growth Alliance, uh, talk again about uh, just the economic benefit of this, because this is going to be huge for hotel stays. Sure. And the city gets a lot of money from hotel motel tax. That's right. It's going to drive, you know, I think the mayor said yesterday, 50,000 additional rooms that we're going to need to support these activities. To think about this facility could host a 120 team soccer tournament for a weekend. None of those 12 year old kids drive themselves here uh, to these events. They bring their whole families with them. We're estimating about $30 million in direct spending from individuals more than 90 miles away from Springfield annually. So those dollars go right back into our economy, the hotel, motel tax money, and then the benefit to small businesses also. So this isn't something that just benefits a big company. That's what we're inspired about. The business district that's set up to support that facility is larger now. So there's space for new development out there. The small businesses that are there at the site, whether it's in Grain Brewing or Casa Real or Legacy Point Eatery or, you know, the, the hotel, Spring Hill Suites that are out there. Uh, the folks that have been out there a long time waiting for this, they're going to see a benefit too. So there is an unbelievable economic impact, and you're going to see people all over town in jerseys and and uh, sports sports outfits uh, while they're taking a break from their tournaments. Yeah, it's going to be pretty incredible. And then you know those families are. Yeah, they're going to have to go shopping somewhere as well, right? right. I mean, that's that's going to have to happen, and uh, they're going to yeah. be eating at the restaurants and and laying down in the uh, in the hotels. So that's going to be a a great uh, a great benefit for for the local economy. Uh, when do we see all of this? Like, uh-huh. I guess you know you crack the the champagne bottle on it, so to speak. That, that's right. Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, weather dependent, the beans will be harvested at the site this weekend. Uh, and I thought uh, that was another kind of <laughs> crack the champagne bottle. The beans are going to be harvested. You're, right. you're talking like li- literally, not figuratively. The beans are going to be harvested this weekend. And right, then, right. Okay. And then they'll start, though. You'll see the silt barrier and, and the, the heavy construction work starting on Monday out there at the wow. site. Uh, they will they will be stretching turf spring, summer of 24. Okay. Um, early 25 will be the projected big grand opening. There is some hope. With cooperation from Mother Nature, who's our most unpredictable family member here. Right. But uh, with her cooperation, they could do some events out there in a dome maybe late 24. But 25 is going to be the big year when they're really able to host full-scale tournaments. Well, this is exciting. No question about it. Yep. Uh, Ryan McCready, uh, president of the uh, Springfield Sangamon Growth Alliance. Uh, greatly appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, and we'll definitely be talking again in the future about this as uh, all the pieces start coming together. I appreciate you spending the time to talk about it today. Thank you. No question. It is Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and